This program is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. Oh, where were we? What were we doing? Uh, what were we talking about? About that you can find food in the wild and mm. living on living off the grid. You got to watch the way they've got this set up because they they're sneaky and they they like to say well they like to create a shortage shortage of stuff mm -hmm. now can you walk through any forest or any park anywhere and get a pizza or a, a cheeseburger no you cannot so what they've done is they've gotten people addicted to what they like which is you know pizza and hot dogs and ice cream and all that stuff so they're under the impression in their head, well, I can't get food. Well, yeah, you can. You can go out there and you can walk along and you can pick all the food that you will ever need walking out your back door. Between that and I guarantee you can find some place to fish for free. There's food out there and there's plenty of it. It's just most people don't like it. You know, they want the food that they want. They don't want they don't want the other food. And, and I'm just going, well, that's what you exchange. I personally would rather have the freedom to be out of the system and away from them. That I am willing to give up that stuff in order to have that freedom. So do I give up the ability to, to go and go out to eat or buy this or that or what? Yeah, I do. But to me, it's worth it. But that's just me. I would never tell anyone else they'd have to do it too. But... There's an exchange. If you go buy their stuff, if you are in their world and you use their things, then you pay the price. You got to be in bed with them. So to me, it feels like being in bed with the enemy, and I don't want to do that. I'd much rather eat very simply. I don't like food that much anyway, so I just need enough for this body to be okay. And I'm good with that. I've got other things I would rather do. You were talking once about having another channel about living off the grid or traveling. Um, is that channel active? It's still in the works? And if so, what's the name of it? It it is not up and done yet. I've got to redo the. Uh, um, I've got to redo all my videos with the bus because I had to change the vibration of the bus when it was the two of us. I built it a very certain way vibrationally. Mm -hmm. And um, when we went different ways on that one, now I have to redo the whole thing with just me here. So vibrationally, I had a lot of work to do. I did pretty much unbuild something and rebuild it a different way. So I'm in the process of doing that. Then I'll go and put the new videos back on with the new bus. And the uh, uh, it will look a little bit different on the inside, but mostly that's all vibrational stuff. Mm -hmm. And I did realize, it was interesting, that over time, last year I did do some work, and the work that I was involved in had to do with lower vibrations of 3D vibrations that were still fear-based. And I was kind of, it's hard to explain, but I was um, collecting these vibrations to kind of put them in, fold them into a... Uh, what I would call undivine energies or lower vibrational energies that were fractaled out, I was folding them back into the more divine energies. They were folding them back in together. But in order to do that, I had to go pick them up. So that's the reason why I had a kind of a hard year because I had to go interact with these lower vibrations that I haven't dealt with in a while. I've pretty much disengaged myself from things like despair and fear. So I had to go and pick those all up because that was the agreement. So in, in the process, I got myself kind of caught in that law of attraction thing. And one of the things that I realized that I did was when I built the bus with um, the, my partner, is that I built it from the standpoint of needing to protect the bus and us, which is purity fear. I mean, straight up fear. And it just snuck in on me sneakier than than goose shit. I swear to God, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. So that is another reason why, you know, we had to separate is because she was on different vibrations and I was on going a different direction. Well, 
as I went back to my old ways of once I've collected them and then I go to raise those vibrations to go to timelines that are higher, then now nothing is in alignment anymore. I'm in a bus that I built out of fear. So I went, oh. So she went that way and I came back here and I went, okay, so now I've got to rebuild this not being afraid. There's no reason to be afraid. I'm a god. Nothing can hurt me. So I had to go back and do it all over again. So now from that perspective, I have to rebuild that channel. So it, fortunately, I hadn't gotten very far on it. But it will be the title, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully the name of it will be Day, Daydream Drifter okay. is what what the name of it is. And uh, uh, right now I've got Daydream Drifters uh, with an S, but I want to pick that up and just get Daydream, Daydream Drifter. And that's going to be the name of the YouTube channel that will have all of the, you know, cool stuff. What I want to do is show people the cool stuff that, that's available that you can see. A lot of it that's free that people don't know about. And um, the way I want to make, you know, I'm going to do some exchanging, some barter, because I'm a pretty good cook, would you say? Oh, yes. Awesome. <laughs> awesome cook. Yes. So I'm going to do some exchange for some gas money to get here and there with my cooking, mm -hmm. which I think I can do and it'll be fun. And then there's some things that I created on this bus that I want to put on the on YouTube so that people can see how I did it. Because I've watched, uh, oh my gosh, hundreds and hundreds of videos before I did this. I mean, I've been studying on doing this for four years, trying to decide how I want mine to be and which vehicle and how to build it out. And I did have some history because my dad was in construction and we remodeled houses when I was growing up. So I've got a little bit of building experience. But basically what I did was I took a lot of those videos because I've never built a vehicle before. It's always been on the ground. Mm -hmm. So I took a lot of the videos and most of the time I made them simpler. I simplified because I think a lot, a lot of what they did was beautiful, but I think it was just way more complicated than it needed to be frequently. So I want to go, as soon as I get this all back and vibrationally back in order, I'm already feeling better, so that's awesome. Good. But when I do that, then I'll go through and I'll say, well, you know, this is how I built this, or this is how I put this in here, so that people will see, um, you know, another way of doing it, another option that's cheaper and easier. I think Much that cheaper Easier. That, that should be a great channel, great videos. You know, and those travel vlog videos, the RV living videos, they're very popular. This new channel may outperform your current channel. So, good luck with that. It probably will because the new channel will be uh, more fun. And like you said, it speaks to a lot of people in a lot of areas. The channel that I've got now, it's pretty hardcore. I don't, I don't do... I don't do that channel to make a lot of friends or build up a lot of following. Mm -hmm. It's pretty tough stuff I talk about, and I pretty much make people be accountable for their own situation. You, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to come to me and whine. I, I'm not gonna take any whiningness. Your God, fix it. I don't want to hear about it. And that's not very popular, and it's not a good way of, you know, most people they want, they want you to fix it for them. Yep. And I'm mine is not the channel where you call me and we'll do a session and I'll lay hands on you and you'll be all better. And then next month when you're feeling bad again, we'll do it again. You can pay me $150 to do that every month. That's not me. I'm giving you information. I'll do the best I can. But after that, it's up to you to take it, run with it or not. Either way, it doesn't matter. But it's not very conducive to, to, uh, Getting a following that, that people are supporting me in a financial way. Because half the time, they're you know, a lot of times they don't believe it. They don't understand it. They're pissed off about it. So it, you know, it's not very conducive to getting a uh, any kind of monetary. I, I think I've now got $16 on YouTube. But yeah, I don't know if you knew that. But if you don't make $100 in a month on YouTube, they take it. And I've never gotten past a hundred dollars, so I've never made a dime. So, yeah, whatever. Yeah, but yeah, I would I would suspect that 
probably the other channel will be more, uh, the people will probably be more supportive than this one. This yeah. one, and a lot of the times the people that watch this channel are hurting. Yeah. Um, they're, the, the channel that I do now, there's a lot of, of despair. Although I was very excited after doing what I did this last year, collapsing a bunch of timelines, going to different ones. Because I was starting to get kind of frustrated that people weren't getting what I was saying. And after doing what I did, closed it all out. And then it took me about three, four weeks to recover from doing that. And I went back on and started doing videos again. And the comments have changed markedly with the new people. That they're going, oh, okay, so if I do this, this, and this, this is what happens. Okay, I get it. Or there's a difficult situation. But if I look at it like this... Oh, I see. It's just a game. I get it. So I'm finally getting people, instead of fighting for the way that they've done it that doesn't work, which certainly I've seen a lot of that over the life of my YouTube channel, that I've had a lot of people say, well, this is how horrible things are. And I say, well, try it this way, and they'll fight to keep it going the way they have been doing, which has been amazing. I'm going, well, just try another way. Because, you know, it's insanity to keep some doing something the same way, expecting a different result. And you've been doing it the same way for decades. It's not working. Just try something else. But they will, uh, there was a lot of that, of fighting. No, 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 no. And I don't care. I, I think that there's a different way. Everybody's going to do this their own way. Everybody. Yep. This is just an example. That's all. I'm just encouraging, get people they the backing that you can do it. You don't need anybody else. You can do this yourself. You do not need any anybody else. But yeah, yeah, I think it's easier for people. They want a book. They want a they want a uh, a series of teaching. They want step by step on how to do it. And the truth of the matter is that doesn't work, and it never has. And it's been going on for a long time. There's all kinds of books. That's what the Bible is. Torah is, uh, you name it, there's a book where somebody who got to a certain phase, who became more enlightened, who figured things out, tried to write a book explaining it to people, tried to form a group teaching it to people, and it doesn't work. And then next thing you know, you've got a cult with somebody killing a bunch of people, or you've got a religion that's killing other people. It just, it doesn't work. And the reason why it doesn't work is because it's such an individual process that as much as people would like for them to be a simple answer, that it just be, follow this book and it will be and you will be fine. Because we're all so different and our walk is so different, that will never work. It's the reason why and the New Agers do have that right in that they say that uh, you, you, you are the one you've been waiting for. And that is very true. It's you that will save you now. But you can't save anyone else. You can only save you. But And you need to do you and nobody else. And that's now we're at that time. It's time for you to do you and don't worry about what everybody else is doing. It's none of your business. Well, you make a great point that we do live in a microwave age, instant oatmeal age. We want uh, convenience. We want you to tell me how to fix it. But also what you talked about, people that become enlightened and I've seen it so many times again. People like Neil Donald Walsh, Eckhart Tolle, you know, they, they write good books and all of a sudden people start worshiping them. You know, they don't want to, you know, you got a great book. How about read the damn book and do it for yourself? No, they got to worship this guy. And then, of course, it, I think ego just naturally sets in. You know, they want you to go to these seminars, so they do these seminars. And, you know, Neil Donald Walsh originally was going to write just three books and go off in the sunset. Then there was two more. Okay, it was five books. He's still writing books. You know, I I think it it just is so easy to be corrupted when you get that Messiah mentality, right? I mean, and you've had people experience that to you. You don't like that. You push them away. You're like, God damn it, you are your own God. Don't make me your God. And I wish more people would embrace that attitude, you know? But it's it's almost like it's almost like that I'm in a catch-22 because if you don't have a book and if you don't have a following, nobody listens to you. Right. But if you have a book and you have a following, 
you start dumbing it down and making it simple yeah. so that they'll buy more books yeah. so they'll do their thing and to get more of a following so it's like a lose-lose yeah. I, I have no desire to be anybody's messiah zero zilch I don't want that and I've always said that from the get-go I've said, said that it's your job I can give you advice and I've got a lot of things I can do but you can do them too you just haven't remembered how it doesn't make me special it just make, makes me that I I know how to do it I remember because I died right. that's it but it, it is very difficult because you do I run into this all the time do you have a book and I'm going I have got 500 videos that will fill 50 books. Why do you need a book? Why do I need to write it down? It's free. Go listen to it. Take yeah. notes. Use it or don't use it. Why is there's this validation somehow that if I've got a book out there, then somehow what I've said over 500 videos is more valid because I wrote it down. Now, okay, maybe in the olden days, you had a publisher that listened to what I had to say, and they might, I don't know, in their all wise way said, okay, well, you are a valid person, and your point is valid. But that's not true anymore. Anybody can publish a book. Yep. Anybody can publish a book. And it's really easy to publish one if you just sell downloads. Yeah. Really easy. But it's even easy. I've got publishers. I get emails from publishers every week trying to publish my stuff. But it still comes down. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. It feels like I'm going to go down that same hole. So I'm stuck in this place of, well, I really would like, you know, about 100 people to, like, subscribe to me for $5 a month to make my life easier. I'd really like to have that. But again, am I willing to sell my soul or step myself into that world to get it? No, I'm not. I'm really not. I've been out and visited people. I've been in the presence of people who had that feeling about me, that Messiah complex thing. It is painful. It is painful to have somebody latch on and pull that hard because that's what they do. Because they don't know that they can pull that energy from within. So they stand next to me and they reach out and grab my energy and pull. Well, I'm not an expert on this planet. I am Barely hanging on. I do not need a bunch of people reaching out and yanking my energy away from me. I, I don't want that. I'm not in. And it doesn't help them. So what's the point? My whole point in doing this is to help people feel better. It doesn't make you feel better if I say, okay, well, let me do it. I, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Follow me. That's bullshit. How does that help you? It doesn't help you. Now, me trying to help you figure out that you're the one that can do it and you can do it all along, which is why I do what I do. And I do videos where I've screwed it up and I had to get back on the wagon. I've fallen off more times than I can even count. I That's the point. The point is to show you guys, everybody, that you can do this yourself. You don't need, you don't need me. Now, maybe something I've done or something that, you know, you can get stuck on a question. Like, I don't know, you can get stuck on any question like why are we here and if what I have to say if I say why you're here and that makes you go oh, okay well then I can check that off and now I can go to work because it's just in the back of your mind or this unsure whether or not you can handle let me turn on the light and yeah, that's better um, whether or not you can handle being here or if there's a point in all of this if I can tell you yeah there is if you've had an experience with an alien and I can say, yeah, they're there. Or uh, you, you're you dealing with a, a dead loved one's ghost and I'd say, yeah, it's very real. Or you can remember seeing fairies when you're a child. If I, I can verify all of that so that people can open up their minds and say, this is a lot bigger than you think it is. Relax. Look around. You're not crazy. It's huge. Go with it. Flow with it. Enjoy it. See if you can see, then maybe, just maybe, they'll have an easier day. Or even an easier moment. I'm okay with an easier moment. <laughs> yeah, easier moment's good. You know, what you could do one day is just hire a typist and just sit down with her, tell your story of your near-death experience, and then some pointers, what to do. She could type it all out probably in, I don't know, four hours, sell it on Amazon as an e-book, 
And then you can tell people, here, here's my fucking book. Go read it and leave me alone. Just kind of get it out of your system, you know? And, and I may, I know I've got enough of it. The, the reason why I can't, because I'm actually a writer. Oh. I'm actually a decent writer. Mm -hmm. But in order to tell the story or access the other side, I can't do that and writer type. Yeah. It's like when I do this in physical, it cuts off that. And I've tried hundreds of times to do it. What I can do is I can type my own videos and organize it. I can do that, but and I probably will. And I'll put it out there just eventually to see if see if people will buy it, although I certainly don't understand it. That some people do better if they read something versus hear it. Mm -hmm. And I get that. But you can, you know, write that stuff down. But still I don't think the younger people are as into needing a book. I think that's older people. Yeah. Uh, because I've interacted. I'm getting younger and younger people. Um, compared to two years ago, I'm getting more and more people that I'm interacting with that are younger and younger, and they have far less need to have a book. Hmm. Okay. They move too fast. They move very, very fast. So, yeah, I, before it's all said and done with, I probably will have a book. But I don't want I don't want what you said. I don't want that following like that. I yeah. don't you know, I don't I don't want that. I want to have discussion that you've got your strengths, I've got mine. Mine are pretty unique. Um, and that's cool. But I guess you just you know, gotta I don't want to I don't want a cult. If I'm gonna do that and I did talk to somebody, I can't remember who it was. But if I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna start a church. I'm gonna get the full boat. Thing of, I mean, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right and get all of the tax breaks and everything. I think it'd be a cool church, though. The Church of Nile. But I could build it that way. I could build it the way I want it, and then it would be right rather than leave it to people. Because if I write books and they send it out, then people will take it. Mm, you know what they're going to do? They're going to simple. They're going to miss. They're going to miss say everything that I've said, and then tell other people it's got to be done this way and. Yeah, uh, cool. I've seen it done too many times. Yeah, it always happens. You know, mankind is just cheap, you know, pretty much. Yeah. So, <laughs> so now I've got a couple questions on some spirituality, if you don't mind. You got time or, or you got to run? That time. Okay. Shoot. All right. So you said in some of your videos the only reason, the main reason you came to this life, to this planet, is to help Gaia ascend to 5D. Is that, that's right, right? Okay, so my, I got a couple questions on that same thing. One, how come Gaia just can't leave now? How come Gaia's like, hey, I'm, I'm out of here, fuck this. And why, how can you help her in the flesh? Couldn't you help her outside of this planet the same way? Okay. The process of building anything, and this is hard to explain because... Uh, because you're a human and you've got a human brain. So I'll just have to let you know that to create all of these things, especially in the fractal dense vibrations that are very close to each other, is very complicated. It is very, very complicated. It took a lot of tweaking and creating and stuff to move the energies around, divide them up, and then bring them back together in such a way that it created this planet to begin with. The whole thing is mind-bogglingly, well, the mind couldn't understand it. So can Gaia do it without any help at all? Sure she can. But you can build a house by yourself, too. You can absolutely build a house by yourself. It can be done. You're a smart man. You're healed. You can do it. But it's a lot easier to build a house if you had 20 people helping you. And it's the same concept. Can she do it? Sure. But she's my friend. And I want to come and make it easier for her. So that's the reason why that is done. That's also the reason why she can't just do it. Uh, well, in reality, there's no such thing as time, so she already has. But the biggest reason why it's done slower is, number one, it's very, very complicated. And number two, a lot of it is she's very protective of the skin suit that you are borrowing right now. She's very protective of every being on this planet. It's all made up of her. It is her. So your consciousness, which is having this experience, is running around in this skin suit that's a part of her. She wants the skin suits to go through this process as comfortably 
as possible. She is aware that the entities that have come to have the 3D experience, and they're going to be uncomfortable in the skin suits, but she still, as a mother, she is very motherly. She will do everything in her power to make the transition options. Whether you take it or not is up to you. But she will always have the option for consciousness to take the skin suit through the most comfortable route to get out of this vibration. That is an amazing answer. I have never thought of this point. Often I think to myself, you know, and we all think this, like, you know, I'm just passing through. When I die, you know, all this, it's, I can't take none of this with me. But I never thought that all of this is Gaia's, except for just my little soul in this body here. Yep. Uh, that's amazing. I never thought of that. So that's that's an incredible answer. So on that same theme, why did you feel that you had to come in a skin suit to help her? Was it would can you accomplish more oh. this way? Or? Oh, that's the other part. Why did yeah. I need to do it from the standpoint of a skin suit? Yeah. In order to collect, if you, if you're not here on the planet in the illusion of time and space. It is extremely difficult to understand and collect the vibrations that are so fractal down here. Because, uh, you know, I can talk to my higher self. I can talk to the beings that are vibrationally outside of the game, but are right there. And conceptually, we can see it, but it's kind of like, okay, you can see your curtain. You totally can see that curtain. But you don't understand how each one of those threads was created, was made into thread, and then was made into fabric, and then the fabric was made into a curtain. Although you can see, and you know all that stuff happens, you absolutely know it, but you, you don't know it in its bits and pieces. In order to get down and really grab a hold of all these vibrations and put them back into the hole, because they were pulled out one at a time, each one of them, teeny tiny little vibrations, massive amounts of them, all fractaled away, separate from each other. So what happens is it's really difficult to do, to put those back together again in the right order, because they have to be done in the right order, to go back towards oneness. It's very tricky. So what has happened is we come down here, we volunteer to get down right there at the most, the lowest, most fractal area and put those vibrations back in, and you just kind of, you kind of guide them back in. You kind of push this wave back in. You kind of guide it back in, and then they all go like this. It's really hard to do that from outside of the game because you've got outside of the game. You're in the all that is. That's a lot of stuff going on. Even down here, it's hard to focus on doing what I do for Gaia because. I still have to eat. I still have to talk and walk. And all of that interferes alone. It interferes with what I'm trying to do on that level. So that's the reason why we do it from here. It's to get down, be focused, and do a specific job, a certain part of the ascension for the planet. Okay, that's a great answer. I always wondered about, you know, why all the star seeds had to come in the flesh down here and why they could not have done it up there. And that, that makes sense. That makes now, see, it's, a, it's a human ego thing that people think, okay, you come down as a human and then you become better. So you come down and you're worse. You're, you're a worse being of some sort. And then you're going to go through this stuff. I don't know, one through 10, check them off. And then whenever you leave, you're back to being a good being again. Well, that's not true, and nobody's a better or worse being. It's just an experience. It's a game. That's all. Yeah. So you were up there doing that game, that part of the game. Then you come down here, but to do this part of the experience, to disengage the game, to end the game, to bring a close to this movie, then you're going to play this role. That's it. You're just playing a role. It's not better or worse. It's not better or worse. You know, as a long-term human myself, I find it like kind of a waste. You know, like in a sense, like you you come down here and you're like, hey, you're here. Isn't there a part of you that just wants to enjoy this game while you're down here? 
I, I know you've said this to me so many times. I love you, G-Man, so much. <laughs> if you understood what I remember, then you would totally understand. But how do I make you understand that this is so, this experience here, this game that you guys love dearly, uh, you, it's like that naked and afraid thing. You think they're not having fun? They're having fun. But do you want to do it? No. But nobody says, well, gee, man, you should go do it anyway because it's a hell of an experience and you'll, you'll regret it. Nobody does that to them. So what I'm saying is you don't understand. This is like something that I'm doing for a friend. But this is, this is for precise, little, tiny, slow detailed, experiencing things from every tiny little aspect. It's just not my thing. Where I come from, things are very fast. Everything moves very fast. Even though it's it's nice here and the trees are pretty and the sunset's beautiful, the pace of everything in time and space drives me nuts because I don't like the setting. I don't like that I don't like time and space. I don't like it. It's not my normal. I like, I like now time. And that alone, although I understand why it's used, it's used to create even more intense game. It's like, okay, it was Naked and Afraid started with Alone. And then it was Alone with Five Items. And then it was Afraid of Five Items. And then eventually it was Three Items Naked and Afraid. They keep adding stuff. Right. And okay, right. we're going to put you in the most you know, the hottest places. Well, then eventually they put them in Alaska. Okay, so we're naked and afraid, three items in, and, and it's freezing cold. Now what do you do? So that's what this game is. How more intense can we make it? And on my side, I am more of a footloose, fancy free, no intent. It's not intense. It's fun. It's fast. So it's not the stuff. It's not the the land or the people or the experience per se, it is the setting that it's all set in. Hmm. Interesting. That I'm going, okay, I got it. Okay, I go to a situation, I'm going, okay, got it, let's go to something else. Okay. But I want to have the experience and move. And here it's like you have the experience and you like really go into it. Look at it from every single, I'm just Snore. I'm ready. Come on, I got it. I got it. Yeah. You said in, in uh, I believe your last video there are more beings watching down at us than are actually playing the game. And I think of this life often is just there's so much drama, right? There's like if it's not people problems, relationship problems, problems with your dog or your job or your house. And I thought like this is like a TV show. Is that what they're watching? Or are they just watching yes. all this? <laughs> yes, it is like it is just like you watch Naked and Afraid. They're watching Earth. Earth. Let's go look and and, and they do that all the time. They'll come in and they'll depending upon where they are because there are beings that are in the fourth dimension that are doing it and they'll fly in on their spaceship. There are actually bubbles that they're kind of like. Uh, I don't know how to explain these, but it's it's kind of like a, a tour. You can go and have a trip to Earth, and if you pay a certain amount of money, then you go down in these, like, they're like little spheres, and they'll, they'll hold, like, four people, four beings, and they can get in here, and it'll, like, go down through the cities, and it'll, they're they're all over the place. They're all running through, and they'll, they'll go, and they'll watch people do what they do. They'll watch the Earthlings, and then if you, if that costs a lot of money to do that one. And then you may just have a spaceship and you may just, you know, hover above and watch down below. And then there are beings that are outside the game altogether that they're watching vibrationally. They're, they're, yeah, it's the, it's the hottest show. It's like, um, uh, what's the, what's that show that everybody watched? Game of Thrones. It's the Game of Thrones of the multiverse right now. I'll be down. So when those uh, all are stars and you don't know it. How about that? We're celebrities. So when a UFO wants to come and play the game or watch the game, and then they crash, they're probably like, "Oh fuck!" Right? They're shit. We're in yeah. trouble. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they just get killed, right? We shoot them and stuff. So 
Yeah, they, most of the time they all they just kill them. They just kill them. Yeah. Oops, but they're creation. They're gods too, so they must have wanted it to, to, to happen or it couldn't happen. Yeah, because I, I think why would such an advanced society or civilization even bother with us? It, it'd be like going out of your way to watch some ants, you know. But the, the same reason that people watch ants. Yeah, I mean, they. I guess they just get off on our silliness, right? Like, yeah, look at those assholes. They're just oh, yeah. fighting each other there's, and always arguing. There's, and, a, there's a lot of fascination, and I absolutely understand, mm -hmm. because the things that humans do make no sense. It's the completely arbitrary things that humans decide to do. You know, it's just bizarre. It's just really bizarre that a human will decide that something is a good thing and another thing is not a bad thing and they will go to the yeah. they will have all kinds of wars and killings and stuff over proving that this thing is a good thing but five years later they could completely change their minds and all of a sudden that thing that the whole everything was built on okay cigarettes cigarettes tobacco best thing ever built a country on it years later worst thing on the planet you gotta get rid of it I mean, just arbitrary, out of the blue. It's just like, what? 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 And you got to stay on your toes. So, yeah, they watch a lot of that going, what? Why do they think that? And I'm forever, because I, I can talk to any of them. And they're always going, but why? And I'm going, don't ask me. <laughs> I do not understand why. Yeah. <laughs> because you... they like drama. Dra humans, drama kings and queens of the multiverse. And They're we, so dramatic about everything. And if we don't have enough in our life, we watch it on TV. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, one thing, though, that humans are great at is arts and entertainment. When you think about it, the, the creativity of music and paintings and theater and television and film, I mean, it, it's amazing. The creativity of science fiction, uh, that's probably humanity at our best, I would think. Well, that is who you really are. You, you're you seeing it from, that's what we do. We are creationists. Mm -hmm. That's all we do. That's what this game is. It was a creation just like a song is a creation. Just like a movie is a creation. This whole game is a creation. That's all we do. We create, we experience, we create, we experience. That is what we always, that's what we will always do. You've always done it and you always will. That's why there's such a fascination with creation, but whether or not you're creating by, um, you go to school whenever you're in kindergarten, you're creating, you're a part of a group of people and you're creating. Everything that you do is a creation. Everything that you do, everything that societies do is a creation of some kind. It's, it's pretty magnificent, but to us, that's not the fascinating thing. We do that anyway. We all do that. All beings do that. All of us do that. It's a part of who we are. So that's kind of the one thing that makes sense to me. That's the thing that I like music and I like, especially concerts. I like watching. I like watching plays. I like watching movies because it's actually people understanding that what they're doing is make believe. Yeah. And that's easier to watch than walk outside where people are taking it all so seriously not understanding that that's a movie too. So they get, oh no, this is real and this is make-believe. No, it's all make-believe. Very good point. I, I say this to myself. I thought I had a great, uh, what do you call it, moment one night. When, when, you know, when I dream, you know, it's always a new setting, right? And in this dream, it seems real to me and there's a history, right? It's all set up and, you know, I have my friends or my enemies. And then I wake up and realize, ah, it was all just make-believe. And yet, well, this life is too. Right? Yeah. And once I die, you know, it, hey, that, what a you know, what a cool dream that was. Or, you know. Yep. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to go, oh, that was cool. Now next one. Next yeah. one. I got my last question. Is um, Before we do that, I see you got some animals behind you. Who are they? Yes. Let's see my new babies. Let's do it. This is Freya. Hi, Freya. Say hi, hi. Freya is a, that's a cool story. She found me. Freya did. And she's, a, I looked her up finally and found out because she kind of looks like kind of a very thin built cocker spaniel, sort of. Mm -hmm. But it, a lot of her build is wrong. She's got a slight build, 
instead of a square build. So I looked it up, and she's a what they call a swamp poodle, swamp poodle, yeah. designed by Louisiana people so they could be in the boats. It's very lightweight. Oh, wow. So I took her to the veterinarian, and he didn't know what she was. So I said, well, I think she's a, this. There's a fancy name for it, too. Sounds French. So he went and Googled it. It was funny. He went and Googled it, and he came back and looked at her, and he goes, I think you're right. You've got a swamp poodle. So that's cool. Swamp poodle. Mm -hmm. Where's my... Okay. About four, okay. And this is Falcor. Falcor. Looks like Benji. Yes. He's the... A, uh, he's a Shih Tzu. So the two of those guys together, they're so cute. But they fit better. The, the big dogs didn't fit in the bus. And they weren't... Um, well, they, they the vibration wasn't right for them. So they found themselves different homes. But I want to talk about that. Are they happy? So, and they're not... Yes, they're very happy. Yes, yes. Which is what I've, I've always got to look over at him when I'm, especially when I'm missing Inca. Because you know how close I was to Inca. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I have to go look for her. When I start to feel sad, then I go find her and, and see where she's at, what she's doing, and talk to her. And she's fine. Good. Yeah. She's very happy. They're both very happy. But, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have them for a while. Uh, Sandy's the one that got me um, uh, Falcor for New Year's because, oh, man, I was... Not in good shape when the dogs, the big dogs were gone. So it's taken me a little while to get used to the little dogs. Uh -huh. But now we're, now we're quite a little, now we're quite a little family here. We were actually going to look for a, a dog for Sandy. And I was driving along and we were late to go pick it up at a certain time or go look at this dog at a certain time. And I could hear, and I've never had, a dog talked to me first before ever. And I could hear this, and I knew it was a dog. I could tell it was a dog. And I could hear the, the dog calling to me. And I was like, what? We were out on a two-lane highway back in the off, you know, on the back roads. And I could hear it calling. And I was like, what in the world is that? So I stopped and I looked behind and she was running back and forth. You, you know when you can tell when a dog lives along a highway and they stay on the edge of the highway and then a dog that's been dumped and they just oh, run yeah. all over the place. Yeah, yeah. She was running all over the place. I could tell that somebody had dumped her somewhere. And I went, oh, great. So I, I wasn't sure, though, so I watched her and she went running up into a driveway and I went, oh, okay, well, she's found her way home. She's fine. And I started to pull out of the driveway I was in and continue down the highway and out she came and she was back behind me again. I went, oh, no. So I looked around at the, a place that I thought was the closest vibration to her that might be her home, and I pulled into their driveway. Again, it's out in the country. Mm -hmm. So there was this tall grass, really, really tall grass, like two and a half feet tall. So I stopped and pulled over, and uh, Sandy was going, come on, we got to go, we got to go. She'll be fine. She's a creator god. She knows what she's doing. I went, wait, wait. She's talking to me. I need to know what, she's, what she wants to find out if she needs me to do something or whatever. I just wanted to know what she wanted. Yeah. So I stopped and stood outside, and Sandy was talking to me. I asked her to be quiet because I couldn't hear Freya. And all of a sudden, I looked out, and I couldn't hear her anymore. And I looked out, and I went, I said, hello, in my head. I went, hello. And instantly, her little head popped up above the grass. And she looked right at me, and I went, because I'm, I'm not used to things interacting with me that fast and that quickly. And I was like, whoa, hello. So then she got sidetracked. She was in a panic. The vibration was very panic-stricken. And I went, okay. So she went running up to the driveway of the house I thought she might match. And she peeked through the grass, looked up at the house, and went panic and ran back in the grass. And then she disappeared. And I went, well, okay. And I couldn't hear her anymore. So I called in her mind, and I couldn't get her to respond. So I got back in the car, 
started to pull back and I looked over and right next to me in the road, she was right there. Tuh. And I went, what? Well, it was very interesting. The whole thing was bizarre. So I got out of the car, parked, got out of the car, went to walk over to her because I didn't know anything about her. And she rolled over on her back and started crying. I mean, just crying and crying. I went, oh, my Lord. So I didn't know what had happened to her, but I went over there, scooped her up, and she stopped crying. I put her in the back seat. We traveled on our little way. And since then, she's just pretty much been right next to me. And her and Freya are about, I, he thought she was about six months old at the time, which puts her right at about a year difference in age of Falcor and her. So they're about a year apart from each other. And she's about the right size, so they both have friends. So it's pretty cool. That's a great story. So you have a very strong connection to that dog. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yes, I do. And she's very smart, aren't you? Pretty girl. <laughs> okay, what's your last question, honey? Okay, the last question is about timelines. Um, I was watching some videos of Dolores Cannon. Are you familiar with her? I've heard about her, yeah. yeah. She's, she was one that her thing was she could talk to, what was it? She puts people in a seance, and then she could talk to their higher selves, something like that. Anyways, she said that something she learned is when you come down here to play this game, you don't just have one life. You, you have all these lives. Like you have to be black, you have to be white, you have to be a man, you have to be a woman, you have to be rich, poor, you know, American, Chinese. She said there's when you take this on, there's all these games. And I thought, like, man, that would be, like, infinite and forever and shit. And then the way you talk about timelines, I, it got to me thinking, like, is what she said true, but it's all happening at once? Like, yeah. so there's all these timelines. I'm just focusing on this one version of me. Yeah. Yeah. But in reality, well, okay, there's no such thing as time and space, so it's all happening at once. But the difference between... A long-term human, and what I call a star seed, is a star seed because you're way bigger than even that. Even you, with all of those different options, you're you're even more than that. That's just a part of what you're doing. It's like, it's like in your human life, it's you going to work, but it's not who you are. That's just part of your life. Okay, this part of you even being a long-term human, and you're very long-term human. So, in essence, it's not only that you are every race, it's it's race, um, for a long-term human, they will have been every race, they will be every, the gender, all the different kinds of gender, they will have died in every time period, from fetal death all the way to exceptional old age. Most long-term humans have lived up to 150 years old. They also you will have lived as you will have the experience of everything from an atom to birds, insects, and their lifestyle in a in a cage, living a long life, dying young. All of that stuff you will have experienced. All of it. Long-term humans really get into the game. They want to know a perspective. Every perspective you will have had the perspective of being a tree, having a tree, and changing into being a, a house. And then having the perspective of, of being a house involved with humans. Everything you can even imagine being a perspective of this game, a long-term human has had that perspective. When you've done them all, and believe me, that's a bunch, then you leave the game. Okay, whatever. A long-term human really gets everything. But you don't have to. You can come in and be an atom for five seconds and leave and you're done. You don't want to be in the game anymore. So there's any version of this game. Now, a uh, long-term human frequently, they'll run all of this stuff and really lean into the time illusion. So they will make it feel like they're really living moment to moment because that's a part of the perception. They want to feel that. Okay? So they'll really, really get into it. They really find a fascination with all of these different perspectives. Now, let's say now, and this is what you've done, well, essentially at the same time, but you can also get to the point where you're, you've had all those perspectives. You can't find anything else you really want to do. So you, and this is what you're doing, you're ready to leave the game. You've had enough, you're, you're leaving. So you're doing this last hop, seeing if you can do in one lifetime, going from 3D to 5D. 
whether you do or whether you don't, don't doesn't matter. It's the attempting to do it that's the point. You may stop and go, ah, oh, I'm done. I don't want to do that anymore and leave. But in the meantime, in the in the real, all of this stuff is happening at once. And in, in long-term humans case, the entity that you are, the one that's running the skin suit, uh, a long, long, long-term human like you, the essence of who you are, your consciousness, about 75% of it is involved in this game. About 75%. You still got 25% out doing other stuff, being your higher self and connecting to the source, doing other things. You know, you go to work and you may have a 60 hour work week, but you still come in home and have supper. You still go out to the movie with your friends. You still got that with a long term human. In your case, you're spending most of your time at work and not very much time doing other things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whereas me, I'm the opposite of that. I've got about 25% of my consciousness here in this game doing what I'm doing and about 75% on the other side, outside the game doing other things. That's the difference. The difference is you don't have to do any of it. So anybody that says you come to this game and you have to do this, 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 and this, that's human ego. That's that start to finish, begin and end concept. You don't have to do anything. There is no, there is no right way. There is no only one way to get out. You can cut your losses and leave anytime you want. You can pop in when you want. You can leave when you want. You can trade, you know, your consciousness could say, okay, I don't want to run this life anymore. Uh, I'm just going to end it. So it's either going to die or does somebody else want to take over? And another entity will go, I'll take it, I'll take it, and they'll pop in. Your consciousness leaves and goes and does other things. It's The whole thing is so much more complicated than what humans think it is. Uh, which I say to them, look, you guys think that you're all wise and wonderful and civilized, but you still don't know how the human brain works. Yeah. You don't. They don't even know how the human body, the own body that you have studied more than anything else, you still don't understand it. You think that you've got physics down, and then all of a sudden you find quantum physics, and everything you thought you knew is now wrong. You, you're clueless. It's, people do not know because it's too big. The human brain's too little. It's built that way so that you don't remember. It wants you to focus. You wanted to focus on this. You don't want to know how to do everything. Because the point is to take just this little part of the whole, the all it is, and play with it. Yeah. And you can't do that and be bothered with the other stuff outside of here. Your, your game is to just play with these puzzle pieces. Say, okay, here's, here's ten pieces of puzzles. See how many different ways you can put them together. But even though there's a jillion puzzle pieces that are out there, you're, you decided you just want to see what you can do with these. That's all. That's it. It doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. It just means that's how you're playing. That's it. Yeah, that makes great sense right there. The, the fact that we are small. Uh, I don't know how to phrase it. That we are so, you know. Well, sadly, people, we lost connection with Naya, but it was pretty much done. That was my last question. <clears throat> Thank you all for watching and <coughs> excuse me, tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it, and can't wait for the next interview with Naya. Naya. If you happen to watch the tail end of this video, thank you so much for the interview. Thank you for allowing me the pleasure and honor to interview you one more time. As always, remember people, you are a creator God. You are in control of your own destiny. This is your game. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise.